I find the stones to flint nap, more importantly, what makes a good stone for flint napping. You can see down here I have a variety of stones, everything from hard granite cobbles like these guys that I use for hard hammer percussion, to obsidian, different cherts, some Georgetown chert, to Keo Cooks, to something that's just kind of undone. We don't know what's on the inside. Now these stone types are pretty, pretty easy to come by if you know what you're looking for. But anytime you're looking for stone, you're looking to identify stone, you're always looking for a couple different properties. One of those properties is that it's glassy, something like this piece of obsidian right here. It kind of has a waxy sort of look to it, whether it's a little bit more polished, but it's, it's a little bit dull, something similar to a Kia Cook or any of these basic chirts. It's smooth when you break it. It has a smooth surface to it. There's not a lot of ripples. There's not a lot of little micro pieces in there. Take a piece of granite, like one of my hard hammer stones. It's very granular. It's got little pieces of stone that have just collected up and compressed together. This is kind of a collection of stone. This is one piece, one solid systematic piece of stone. Lastly, you want it featureless. Featureless being that you don't want a lot of crystals. You don't want a lot of granular pieces. You don't want a lot of pockets. You don't want a lot of cracks. You don't want fossils. You don't even want concrete in it. Concrete is kind of a universal term that I use when I find irregular kind of consistencies in the stone. I want it to be featureless as possible. That's going to give me a nice easy break and an easy crack when I'm working the stone. So in testing stone, it's real important to understand how you can reveal the stone that's in the inside. Most stones that are desirable for napping will have some sort of outer layer or cortex. You can call it a crust. You can look at this and see that it has that outer polished layer. Some of your keel cooks will have just a little bit of a discoloring, but that's a good indication of what stone's on the inside. If it's somewhat glassy, waxy, smooth, and featureless, that means there could be some good stone on the inside. So this stone right here is a piece of stone I picked up several years ago. Uh, I was walking in a riverbed and it looked like it had some basic properties that would be good for flint napping. I can kind of see right here, there's a little bit of the exposed inside. It's got a little shine, got a little waxiness to it. It might be an opportunity. Even this back end right here shows a little bit of that glassy and smooth property I'm looking for in stone. I picked the stone up and I found a natural platform. With a hammer stone, I gave it a pop. What it revealed on the inside was this. This is ideal. This is the waxy, glassy, smooth, and featureless characteristics I'm looking for in a desirable piece of flint napping stone. Now I've never gone beyond this one single flake and I save it and use it for all the flint napping classes that I do to show folks a one oddly shaped, irregular looking stone with a few small indicators on the outside, when properly struck, can yield a pretty desirable outcome. Let's take a closer look. Just by popping that flake, I can see this has that kind of waxy look to it. It's not super shiny like a piece of obsidian, it kind of has that dull smooth effect. I don't see a lot of features. Don't mistake different colors as features. We're talking about different consistencies in the stone, something that might look like a concrete or crystals or little pockets. We want to avoid that. A good example is something like this. This is just a piece of local rock, but you can see in comparison, it's night and day. Lots of irregular shapes, little crystals, little pockets. There's all sorts of stuff going on in this stone. When you compare it to this stone, you can see why this one is more desirable for napping and this one is trash. Let's take this stone here. I don't know what it looks like. I've got one small little indication on the inside right here that there could be something desirable on the inside. I'm gonna kind of identify a natural platform, an area that's gonna sit below a center line that goes all the way around the stone. I'm gonna give it a pop and see what we got on the inside. All right. So, broke this guy, and it's not too bad on the inside. There's a big piece that came off. When I broke it, I do have that kind of smoothness. I do have a little bit of a shine to it. 
There are some inconsistencies in the stone itself, but this could be workable. You could shape this into some simple tools or even maybe some small points. All right, let's test this piece of stone. Got a couple indicators here, some shininess. Looks like there's been some um, geo manipulation where rocks and tumble and twist and fall and they just naturally break off little pieces and get smoothed out. So let's see if this is something we can work with. Not bad, it's definitely smooth, it breaks nice and easy. Breaks in that conchoidal fracture, we're getting a bulb of percussion, which means I've got a bigger bulbous end that tapers out. All right, decent little edge, simple tool. It's definitely a hard shirt, but this could be workable. Decent flakes, let's see what we can throw. Just looking to pull off a couple clean flakes. That will really give me a good idea. There we go. That right there. Even though this stone is a really hard chert and there's some irregularities in the color and there's kind of a rough cortex on it, you could definitely work this into a nice little stone point. Uh, you could work this into some simple tools, but this is something I would definitely nap with. Let's try this guy. Now, I can already see right here, there's some good indication of stone. Let's give it a few pops, see what we come up with. Yeah, just even that sound, that sounds different. It's got a little ting to it instead of a thud. Let's go right here. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You can see the flake, you can see the flake scar. It's nice and smooth, it tapers out. We're always looking for something that's gonna create a bulb of percussion. That's where I struck the stone with the hammer stone and it's gonna taper out into an edge. This is my proximal end of the flake and this is my distal end of the flake. So even when I'm looking at this stone, I can clearly see I got nice big flakes. I got a good removal of this flake. That was the platform that I hit and it drove this flake all the way off, exposing all of this nice, clean, nappable stone on the inside. It doesn't matter if you're working a piece of dacite, which is a type of volcanic stone, a piece of obsidian, or even a big piece of Georgetown chert like this. You're always looking for those properties of glassy, waxy, smooth, and featureless. When you come across stone that is really granular and has lots of pockets and crystals and irregularities in it, it is not a good stone to nap. Glassy, waxy, smooth, featureless, that is what you're looking for. That is what's gonna make a huge difference in the flakes that you remove to the points you come out with. So when we're looking for that ideal stone, glassy, waxy, smooth, and featureless. Those are the four things I look for in stone. More importantly, the flakes that are removed are gonna be nice and clean. They're not gonna be chunks like this that we remove from those test stones. We want them to be nice and smooth. We want that flake to break in a conchoidal fracture and produce a bulb of percussion. That is indicative of a smooth shock wave traveling through the stone, producing me a proximal end and a tapered out distal end. That's something I can nap with, something you can nap with. Now where I find the stone, all around. I get lots of my stone from Texas, New Mexico, Utah. The places I look for it are riverbeds, road cuts, and anywhere where I can get to the stone, transport it out. Typically, I research what ancient cultures used and I find that stone. The key thing is you gotta get out, you gotta walk the landscape, you gotta see what you can come up with. And when you find it, you start cracking stone. That is how I identify flint napping stone. Thanks for watching.